Hello, I'm Bob Daniels, and I want to thank you for watching my vlog today. We're going to be talking more about phone number issues. Now, you remember in my last vlog, I talked about how we must have a, a phone number that is just like everybody else's, not something special that was provided by a VRS company. because we need to be able to use any VRS company out there and use the phone number for anything we like. So the Federal Communications Commission has a problem with that. And they promoted, promote, proposed a way to solve this problem. For deaf people to be able to use VRS services in the future. And they came up with three proposals in, in general. Phone numbers can go into a special database, that's one thing. And there are three eyed ways to do this. One was called New Star, which is part of the Number Portability Administration Center, or NAP NPAC. So it has the list of all the, most of the phone numbers in the United States. There's also CSD VRS. We're not going to talk much about them right now. But there's also HOVRS and AT&T, which also made a proposal to create a database of technology regarding Internet Protocol or IP. We'll talk about that later. So there were these different proposals that came in when the FCC asked for them. And so the VRS providers gave their responses to the request for proposals. Sprint. They have a very good reason to be in this business. We know all about Sprint. So they provide Relay and also are a technology provider as well. So they, propose, they support the New Star plan, the NPAC plan, to make numbers portable among different providers. And do I agree with Sprint? Well, I'm not going to tell you whom I agree with. I just, you know why? Because... Well, they recently, recently published a communications daily publication that got information from the FCC, and it seems that the HOVRS and AT&T proposal uses these addresses using a third-party provider and that the FCC would use that idea for use that towards the way the, the billing is going to be done. Now that worries me. Let me explain why. I'm really not such so averse in technology necessarily. I'm not a programmer, but I understand a few things. The HOBRS and AT&T plan well, it says that we should use a database of IP or Internet Protocol addresses. The NPAC plan uses something called URI. The majority of wireless and, and, and IP numbers use the URI system, not AP addresses. We need to make sure that the FCC is watching this and that they support what we're going to do and not necessarily what the VRS providers think is best for us to do. In talking about IP addresses as opposed to URIs, if we use the IP plan, the IP methodology, that can provide more services. For example, the U than the URI, the URI plan a cell phone, cell phone provider might have URI capability. It can provide services like call forwarding, call waiting, video mail, and the IP system doesn't provide these kinds of systems, or even caller ID, which URI does provide. It's a more open system, not a closed system, which the URI system would be you can add services later.
really, to summarize, we need to figure, find out who's in control of this database. Not the VRS companies necessarily, but an independent third party to oversee this process. So we really can't use IP addresses for this. We really need to use the URI because we really want a large array of services and the URI provides that. When you're talking about a closed system or an open system, we need to talk also about firewalls. Now that word, firewall, is often heard when people talk about a new methodology, a new modem. When you put a phone into a system, you're going to have a firewall as a protection to protect your system. So it can stop someone from calling you who you don't want to call you. It protects you from other to protect you from others who might want to get into your system. So the VRS company will put that in necessarily and will can block others from calling you. It's really not a safe way to go. It makes it possible for abuse and fraud if you had an open system. We want a closed system instead that will take the um, possibility of abuse and fraud out of the picture. In my earlier vlog, I talked about the NPAC. That they can provide phone numbers to hearing people just as they provide them to deaf people, the same kinds of phone numbers. They've asked for comments to provide them to the FCC. And so many of you did that. They got several comments from you and that they want the NPAC plan to be put into effect. And the FCC, I'm sure, took notice of that. But we're not done. We need to make sure that the FCC, puts, when they put this out for bid, that whoever is going to manage the database has technology to do so and will allow VRS companies to get access and to use the various features and provide the various features like the call forwarding, call waiting, video mail and caller ID and others that we've talked about before. We want to make sure that this technology will prevent the abuse and fraud that are present in open systems. This is very important. So like I said, the feedback that you've provided is so important. It's your voice in the process. Your voice needs to be heard, but in written form. Please send your comments to the FCC. Use their website. Don't worry, it's not hard to navigate through. The website is being developed now, and it will help us to find our way through and to provide the comments that we need to, and we need to work with that system. So go to www.vrstnnow.com. When you go in there, you will see a list of possibilities that you can choose from as your next step, and you can go to put your comments in over there. If you're like I am, and maybe written language is not your best and you better prefer to sign, don't worry. The website has a few examples of what you can say in your feedback to the FCC. Probably this is not the FCC site, it's a different site, but they'll help you make your feedback happen. So thank you very much for watching my vlog today.